In this video, I'll be showing some DIY solutions to LED film and photography lights that I've come up with. A couple months ago, I was borrowing an LED panel light like this one for a video shoot, and it worked very well, but then I lost access to the panel and didn't want to spend hundreds on my own. With the next shoot quickly approaching, I threw together this quick and easy light based off a cheap 100 watt LED chip. It uses the same type of heatsink from my 1000 watt LED, and the chip is just bolted on with thermal grease. I initially used the same type of lens also, but it created a yellow fringe around the light so I removed it. I attached a 5 8 inch rod to mount it using standard grip heads. It also fits right over the pin on my cheap light stand. To diffuse the light, I then built a reflector shield around the chip. It used foam board, tinfoil, and wire. After that, I attached a square frame of parchment paper to the front. I would use clothespins to attach pieces of orange film gels to adjust the color temperature. For cooling, I used two 60mm cooling fans on the rear of the heatsink. This whole light is humorously crude, and it's very obvious I threw it together within a few hours. However, it was a good temporary makeshift alternative to a real panel. Here are some of the shots I used it for. Traditional wet coat paint. But in 2011, we jumped into the Unfortunately, I built this before learning about these high CRI 100 watt LED chips. High CRI, or color render index, basically means the quality of the light is much better or closer to natural sunlight. Comparatively, the cheap 100 watt chips have a green tint and some of the colors appear less accurate. Here are some comparisons showing the cheap LED up against the UG high CRI LED. You'll notice the green tint with the cheap LED and the colors appear much more vibrant and accurate with the UG LED. The camera's white balance can correct for some of this tint, but even when it does, the colors look dimmer and more muddy. The UG LED has a color temperature of 5600K, which is the same as daylight. The cheap LED has a cooler color temperature, but I adjusted that in the camera so that you can really tell the difference in color quality. I wish I would have used a UG LED in my DIY film light, because it would have created much better skin tones. Now I didn't intend for this light to be permanent, so I built a nice panel using these high CRI FlexFire LED strips. These strips are very bright and come in a variety of color temperatures. For this build, I used a Coroplast backing as a base. On the panel, I alternated between 4200K and 6000K strips, so that the color temperature can be precisely adjusted by dimming every other row. For this build, I first soldered short wire segments to each strip. I attached one color, then the other with the wiring on the opposite side. The LED strips have an adhesive backing which makes attaching them very easy. Next, I soldered each side onto the main power wire for both positive and negative. Then I sandwiched them under some Coroplast strips to tidy things up. The power wires from each side go into their own dimmer. These dimmers aren't ideal because they use a PWM signal for dimming, which causes flicker in the video. I'll talk more about that later, but some sort of voltage dimmer would be better. The power inputs for the dimmers are connected together, and I glued on a 5 8 inch rod for mounting the panel on a grip head. It can also conveniently fit into a wine bottle. I built another panel with super cheap, low CRI LEDs for comparison. This panel has a cooler color temperature, and it's a bit dimmer. However, I matched the exposure and color temperature with the camera so that the color quality can be observed. I also compared them with the high CRI 100 watt UG LED chip. You'll notice that the colors are more vibrant with the high CRI LED lights. Also, the low CRI strips have the same green tint as the cheap 100 watt LED chip. Without changing the color temperature in camera, here's the high CRI panel on its coolest setting and its warmest setting. The ability to adjust the color temperature is great for matching the panel with existing light. Here's a brightness comparison with both panels at full power and the white balance set to daylight. Unfortunately, the PWM dimmers make it unusable for video at higher shutter speeds, but at full power there is no flicker at all so you can even shoot at a high frame rate. I'm powering the panel off an 8 amp AC adapter that's also from FlexFire LEDs. However, it can also run off a 3S LiPo battery for extra portability. From a film and video perspective, these high CRI LEDs are awesome for producing natural and vibrant colors and accurate skin tones. Unfortunately, I haven't used these new lights to shoot any interviews or portraits, but I will soon. 
See the description under this video for links to the products I used. Also, since there was so much interest in the 1000 watt LED video I made, I'm planning on producing some heatsink housing reflectors for the 100 watt chips and selling them. There's a mailing list in the description of this video if you're interested. In regard to the last helicopter review video I made, the winner of the XK K120 is RC model test, and the winner of the XK K123 is Foamy RC. Congratulations. Thanks for watching. Bye.